I was I was amazed at some of those stories that Paul came up with. Um, the other one that just blew me away uh, was he said that he was uh, Paul Tice. He owns a company down in San Diego called Book Tree Publishing. So give him a call. It's called Book Tree Publishing, San Diego. He publishes all kinds of arcane, strange books on the occult and religion and philosophy, etc. Very successful uh, publisher. But he was telling me also that um, when he got out of college back east, Massachusetts, he said, when I got out of college, I got a job working for a television radio TV station. And he said, my job was to work at a relay station, which was up in the mountain, so that the main station in, in his town would beam a signal up to the relay station. Then he would take the, uh, that signal and relay it to the next town over the mountain. And so it's a relay station. So he says, so my job was like a fireman's job. You go up for four days, you're off for three. Then you go up for three days, you're off for four. But when you go up there, you're by yourself. And you're by yourself for the four days until your relief comes. And he says, so every day, my job was to every hour or so, I had to walk around the inside of the station and make sure everything was working right. And if anything goes wrong, I had to fix it. That's all. That was my job. And he says, so a very cushy job. Every hour or so, I just go around, make sure everything's working right, and then go fix yourself something to eat and watch TV. Mm -hmm. And he says, so it's a very nice, cushy job. And he said, but one day, one evening, one afternoon, when the sun uh, was just about gone down, but it was still light out, he said, the station had, they, they had cleared off a circular area and cleaned it off up in the mountains. They had cleaned out the circular area and built high security fence around it, and the station was in the middle. One afternoon, he said, I, I, my, my bunk, my bed was at the back door, and we had this big, huge security back door with the glass and the, the metal mm -hmm. and, and, the, and the glass. And he said, so I was laying there. I'd just done my rounds, and I was laying there reading, and the sun hadn't gone down. Uh, the sun had gone down, but it was still light out. And he said, I'm laying there, reading, look at the sky through the, through the window. And he said, I look up, and there is Bigfoot. There is a, a man, you could tell it's a man, but he had the face of a dog. And it was red, a red color uh, 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 hair, reddish hair. But he said he had the face of a man, but it was half dog, half man. And he said, I was frightened to death when I saw this thing because it was looking at all the lights on the equipment. And it was, you know, it was, it was mesmerized by all the lights on the equipment, and it didn't see me right here at the door. And he says, I'm looking at him, and he's looking at the stuff. And he said, all I could think of was, did I lock the back door? <laughs> <laughs> and whatever the answer is, it's too late now, good or bad, because if you move, he's going to see you. And he said that he started to open the door, but the door was locked. He said, thank God, the door was <laughs> locked. And he said, but when he started to open the door, he pulled on it, and he said he wasn't heavily built. He was very— But he, he bent was, the door handle. Yeah, and he said you could see the metal door being pulled. He said you could see the Where metal door. Where was this? Whereabouts— uh was the station was this here it was up in it was up in the mountains in uh, in massachusetts up oh. in the mountain area of massachusetts and he said but you could see the door being pulled when he was pulling it so this thing was not very uh, heavily built but god damn the thing was strong it's bending a metal a metal door pulling on it and he says uh, i could see the door was was you know, and thank god the thing was locked and he said, so I just watched him. I didn't say a thing, didn't move. And he said, and he finally looked down. When he looked down, he saw me, and he jumped back. And he said, when he jumped back, I knew I scared him. So I jumped up to like I was going to get him. And it scared him. He said, that's what I wanted to do. <laughs> and he said, so I, frightened, I scared him, and he turned around and ran. And he said, I watched him run. And he ran like a gazelle. He, 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 he took one step and went, sailed into the air, and then came down and took another step, and took three steps, and he went over the fence. The last step was one step. He went over the high-security fence and back down, he's gone into the forest. 
He says this thing was thinly built, covered with reddish hair, had a man's face, but but is also part dog. And he said it was thinly built. And he said, I don't know what it was, but I know what I saw. And so he says, so when I hear about wolf men or, or these uh, Bigfoot or Sasquatch. Yetis or whatever, I don't know what it was I saw, but this thing was not of this world. 